Welcome, everyone. Today I'm giving you a WASM experience report. Um, it's not quite what, what's in the track as a title, but still, I think uh, like it turned out to be something a bit of a different kind of talk. So I hope you forgive me for that. Um, but in principle, we're still, I'm still talking about like using IPLD essentially from WASM. Uh, first of all, hey, everyone. I'm Philip. Um, I'm a Theos 2.3 on uh, GitHub. I work as a protocol engineer at Fission, and I work on UCAN there, and I work on WinFS, specifically RS WinFS, uh, and I want to specifically shout out AppCypher here, who's one of my colleagues who I'm, I've been building this with, uh, which props to him. Yeah, and uh, we went WASM with our RS WinFS, so why did we do that? The answer is we are hoping for efficiency and portability. And why portability? Because, well, if you have content addressing, then you get portable data, which is really nice. But that means you want to have portable compute because now your data lives somewhere else. Uh, and that might be a phone, it might be a laptop, it might be a data center, whatever. You want to do something with this data in most cases and uh, it depends on the environment, et cetera, et cetera, so you want to have something that's super portable. And another thing, actually, is encryption. Encryption forces you kind of to push your computations to the edge and do your computations there. So that means browser environments, mobile phones, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Unless, of course, full homomorphic encryption, uh, but yeah, we're not quite there yet, I think. So, yeah. Um, that meant when we built WinFS, which is like a file system abstraction similar to UnixFS, uh, that is meant to like power user-built apps uh, and like personal data store, we got requests. Like people wanted to run it in browsers, of course, which is where we started, but then also command line interfaces or in, the ser in their servers or workers. Uh, that just naturally happened. And our strategy before was, well, we're, we'll write it in TypeScript. Uh, it'll run a node. and uh, we can put it into workers or command interfaces by providing that environment like with Node or Dino or whatever it is. Um, but that was like slightly painful uh, and we wanted to try it wasn't and like that's how it went. That's, that's like our talk now. Um, yeah, so we built Aris WinFS um, and I should really say that Ferris having a construction hat is like very uh, on topic. It is very much a work in progress. Um, we haven't built everything yet, but so far I'm trying to share what we've learned. So, um, when I say WASM, uh, there's a bunch of things that are very different than like other VMs like Node or whatever. Uh, specifically, WASM is not a VM or uh, it's uh, very restricted. Uh, there is no side effects by default, which mean you have no networking, you have no disk, no index DB or something like that. But it also, and I think uh, Adin previously mentioned that, it kind of forces you to think about your assumptions, uh, which is kind of nice. Um, and that's also like something that uh, forces you to make interfaces, maybe good interfaces, use interfaces, uh, which was not that much the case with our JavaScript and TypeScript code. So that was nice. Um, it also has no built-in GC, which is limiting. Um, yeah, so that's something to keep in mind. And also, like, every time you have two different kind of environments, the host environment and, like, it wasn't kind of thing, you need to think about, like, how data structures in, like, your wasn't thing are going to live. But that's something I'll talk about briefly later. All right, so interesting thing number one, um, we reached for a simple block store abstraction as like a way of solving a bunch of those problems I, I uh, mentioned on the previous slide. So basically that's what it looks like. Um, this is like from, just taken from our Rust code. Uh, we have a put block and a get block. Um, there's some bytes you put into your block. So that's what you expect from your host environment. Um, you provide it with the IPLD codec and you get back a promise of a SID. It's not captured in the type here, um, but that's just because it's interacting with JS. 
in that case. Uh, same thing with the get lock. Um, there are maybe ways to do it more efficiently. I'm interested to hear your thoughts. So far, we're not focusing on that that much. But uh, yeah, it's, it solves a bunch of things. It solves for us the storage abstraction. May it be disk, may it be in XDB, that's up to the host. Uh, but it's like, you will need a block store, uh, whether you're running it in the browser or whether you're running it in a server or uh, some other kind of um, environment. So I think that's like a good abstraction to build around. A block store is not the best abstraction for everything. Uh, you mainly want to have it in like low latency environments. Uh, so you don't want to have this interface uh, when it takes you a long time to like go back and forth. So. In our use cases, this has worked out fine so far. So, yeah. Um, also, another interesting side effect of that is uh, you can kind of build like different things that all connect to a block store, like your networking thing that syncs your DAX uh, with other machines or whatever. Uh, you can all these can all like build, be different things that all connect to, to this block store. Um, and they don't have to know about each other. So it's kind of a very composable thing. It's also, also very, very much related to what Iro is building. So yeah, I think it's just a good idea, good abstraction to build around in low latency environments. Uh, interesting thing number two. So we embrace immutab immutability. Um, we've had issues with uh, um, race conditions here and there in our TypeScript implementation. And embracing immutability just makes a lot of sense when you have content address data. Uh, so we continued with that. And we're kind of pushing the problem to the host again, in a way. But that also makes it more flexible and makes it more portable, right? Uh, so the, like, all of the hard computation is mostly like building together the right DAG. And that is like abstracted away. And all of the decisions around, like, how do you want to do uh, highly efficient, like adding stuff into your directories or whatever, can be a concern of a layer above, or how to do transactions, et cetera, how to do like super fast, high concurrency. Um, so like, we've really built a core around this thing. Uh, we're hoping to like abstract away a bunch of these problems uh, and put them into like the yeah, it's, it's, it should be a problem to host, essentially. And so the abstraction looks like this, for example. This is the, uh, just creating a directory somewhere at a path uh, in an existing directory. And you can see that it returns, in the end, just another directory. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's the immutability. You, it's like if you squint hard enough, it is almost like you're taking a SID and producing a new SID, uh, and like there's just a public directory can like be turned into a SID. There's just a small layer of caching on top of that, uh, and that is what I'm. That is my next point. Um, you don't have to deserialize stuff twice. We think that's like some way of optimizing stuff. You can also lazily load things with uh, a like with this abstraction. Uh, so we have this link here, which essentially is like, here is a link that can be either a SID or some actual decoded data. And that's what we're basing our abstractions around. Uh, this has come up in a similar form in other libraries. Uh, this is like the immutable version of it. And um, yeah, you can see that either you have, you've created, you, you've read something from the network and then it's at the first a SID. Um, and then you have a cache next to it if you've already decoded it which is this one cell for the value cache here. Or uh, you've just um, built something yourself within the WASM uh, runtime, and uh, you might not have serialized it yet. And so you add a cache for the SID next to it. And once you've serialized it, uh, you don't have to serialize it twice. You can just refer to the SID. And you can see like our public directory then kind of lazily loads the tree that's below it. Uh, by just linking to links instead of uh, the struct itself or a SID. And the last interesting thing is we noticed that memory management uh, can be tricky. So when you have your WASM node, 
or your wasm thing, uh, you may give pointers into your memory to your host, uh, which can be difficult. And so like, if you look at the generated TypeScript types, you'll see that wasn't bindgen was nice enough to generate us a free function, which also means we're kind of uh, responsible for freeing our wasm memory. And if we don't do that, we have memory leaks. Uh, that can be difficult. You have to keep that in mind. Um, what you can do is uh, roughly 90, 91% of browser usage out there today supports um, hooking into the node GC or like the V8 GC. And uh, that helps you uh, freeing up that stuff. But it's something to think about. You need to enable it. And yeah, I think there are some PRs in wasn't bindgen or in wasn't pack, I think, that we need to get merged uh, at some point. Yeah, um, that is basically it. It's not much. Uh, I don't know exactly what people are interested in, so I'm trying to make this more a little bit of a Q&A after explaining what we've seen. So, yeah. Brandon. Can you talk a little bit about the wasm wasi side of things? Uh, so yeah, his question was, can I talk more about the wasm wasi kind of side of things? Um, I'm not 100% sure what the wasi, uh, what it all encompasses. As far as I know, it also encompasses like trying to abstract over syscalls, like common syscalls, like networking, uh, doing, yeah, disk writes, whatever. Um, and I think this kind of, I don't want to do that, at least not in uh, Aris Winifest, as long as I can just do it all with a block store abstraction, which uh, does most of the abstraction for me. If we have some code around, let's say, networking, that is very, yeah, it's complex code around networking uh, that I can't solve with just function imports in Wasm, um, like without finding a simple kind of small abstraction that can easily be implemented in hosts, then I would reach for Wasm or Wasi. Or if there's just a host that I can't control and that just expects Wasm or Wasi, uh, Wasm Wasi, then, uh, then I would reach for that. Uh, but so far, I don't think we have this situation ourselves. Um, I noticed on your block store interface that uh, you, um, yeah, go back to it, hopefully. Um, the signature returns a promise, which is sort of a very common return type for a browser API. But uh, I assume you probably want to use this interface in more than just browsers. Is that correct? Yeah. Uh, there's actually like two interfaces. Uh, this is the JS facing interface. And we do have an internal Rust uh, interface. And like, I think this has come up uh, um, before in, in, in this track. Uh, we're not entirely sure what our strategy for other things uh, besides the browser is going to be. Maybe it is easier for us to just build commander interfaces in Rust or build servers in Rust. Maybe it is easier for us to provide microservices in Rust and use them from other microservices uh, on the server. So uh, we might not go Wasm, but we might go Rust as like the portable kind of thing. Um, that is TBD. And like, yeah, the other interface, like the internal interface is just a Rust async await kind of interface. And this is like, yeah, built on top. Uh, you, you may have, I guess, already answered this. My question was going to be around WebAssembly usage in not JavaScript. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I hope. Is, uh, yeah, is that covered by the last answer? Yeah, yeah, I think so. It's hard, I guess. I think there's, there's I know that, uh, well, there's some strategies uh, that go not the wasm route, which is just like there's, for example, so wasm bind gen is doing a lot of the heavy lifting here. I don't have to care about the serialization format between JavaScript and our wasm or our Rust in the wasm. And if we're, I didn't have uh, wasm bind gen, this would be really hard. I would have to, yeah, you, you've mentioned in your talk, you just push integers back and forth. Uh, and you have pointers into your uh, wasm memory. That's not very helpful. So 
Um, Wasm bindgen is doing a lot for us here. There's also C bindgen, which is essentially uh, making C libraries out of Rust. Maybe that is the way to go. And there's like lots of, uh, yeah, lots of programming languages bind or provide bindings against C. So maybe that is the way to go. Uh, that is something I've been thinking about, still concerned about. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you.